Hey traders from around the world, it's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom. I made a really cool video for you on request about island reversals. What are they? How do they work? What's the sentiment behind them? And of course, how can you trade them and make money? Finger guns. Let's do this. Traders from around the world, what's going on? It's Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. Our mission is to enrich lives, and we do that by teaching people how to properly, safely, and profitably approach the markets in both day trading, options, swing trading, long-term, pretty much everything that can be traded, we teach people how to do that for free. In this video, we're gonna be discussing a topic that I just got asked in the morning day trading room. So we're actually live right now, there's a lot of people here and we've had a killer profitable day. So good and I can't really find much else and I don't think that there's any reason to give a lot of profit back. So I figured this would be a perfect time to make a video and teach you a little bit about island reversals. Because I got a question from an amazing human being, her name is Cheryl, in the chat pane and she's asking, is ANET an island reversal? And we'll kind of talk about that and discuss it. First off, what is an island reversal by definition? The only thing I can do is draw it. An island reversal, there are two. You have a bearish island reversal and you have a bullish island reversal. So a bearish island reversal is when the market's going up and it is gonna reverse bearishly. So the stock is trading higher, and then here's the very important aspect, you get a gap. Gap action! So the stock gaps up, trades a little bit higher, rotates down a little bit, and then gaps down. The perfect island reversal has a double gap action. So two gaps of the exact same price very close to the exact same price. So if you can draw a line and there's a gap in the middle of both of those price points, that is an island reversal for the bears. Now the question that needs to be asked is, what time frame does this occur on? And what would you all think for those who are in the room live? What time frame does this have to happen on? This is kind of a trick question, but I'd be excited to see who can answer this. The answer is any of them. <laughs> That's the answer. It can happen on any time frame. okay? So if it happens on a daily chart, you're going to most likely anticipate a decent size sell-off. What we have to understand is this gap can fill. And if that gap fills, the island reversal is no longer as strong. I normally, if I'm looking at a daily chart, I give this one week to fill. If the daily gap doesn't fill in one week, which is five candles, then I prepare for a sell off. So I give it five candles. So if it's on a one minute chart and you're getting a gap, just make sure that the stock itself is not very gappy because you can get a lot of gaps on a one minute chart. So when I say any time frame, I personally only look for island reversal patterns on a 15 minute, hourly, four hour, daily, and I don't know, if you guys ever find one on a weekly or monthly, let me know. They're super rare on that time frame. If you find them on a weekly or monthly, I mean, you're more or less, you know what's about to happen. They're very, very rare on that time frame. They often happen on the daily chart. Now, a bullish island reversal is the exact same thing, just in reverse. So you have the stock trading lower and you get a gap down. Now this gap down very often comes with tons of volume. 
Now, can anyone tell me why it would come in with tons of volume? Who here in the live room can tell me on that? While you're answering that question, I'll read another question. Mick says, how long do you give it to fill on shorter time frames? Five candles. So if it's a 15 minute chart, I'll give it five candles. If it's an hourly, I'll give it five hours. If it's four, I'll give it five. I give five candles to see if it's gonna fill. That does not mean that it still can't fill after five hours. Remember folks, everything in the stock market works, just not all the time. So although these patterns are cool, there are plenty of times where they can just not work and you know just goes, about, goes on with its business. But when I was asking the question about volume, normally this comes in with really high volume because as my buddy Vin says, Vincent, he said it's exhaustion. And that's absolutely correct. Normally these come in with exhaustion volume. So you get really high volume on a gap down, the stock trades a little bit lower, and the important factor is you get some bullish momentum coming out of that and then it gaps again. And that gap, the key of the island, you have to think about it, is you can pretty much circle the price and not hit any candlesticks or any price action so it creates a literal island in price. Type in a seven if you want me to go show you some right now. I have a few island reversals that I'm aware of. And if you want me to find uh, more in the future, let me know. But I'm going to go back to Apple. You might be like, dude, Apple doesn't have any island reversals. <laughs> well, let me go show you one. So an island reversal might not be as clear as a lot of people think it is. The key indication is, number one, do you have a gap of the same price? Number two, are bulls trapped on the gap down? You guys remember when I was bearish on Apple back in like November, December? This is why. This is an island reversal on Apple right here. That's it. So you can see, you can perfectly draw, you can draw a line in the sand where you have a double gap action on both instances. Can you guys all see that? Now, let me blow your mind. An island reversal, an island reversal, is, well, let me rephrase, a bearish island reversal is an evening star pattern. Bum, 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 bum. And that's why evening stars are so cool. If I can get an evening star pattern with a gap, that's realistically what that pattern is. You get a bullish candle followed by a gap up, Okay, stock trades a little bit and then it gaps down, trapping everyone right there in that time frame. So if you are to blend these candles, this is an island reversal, but it's also a really massive evening star reversal pattern because you get a bullish candle, you get a gap up, you get you know some bulls that come in and you get a gap down and it traps everyone who bought right here. So let's go look at Apple uh, previously and let's ask the question, is this an island reversal? So this was a gap down and this is a gap up. Is that a true island reversal? And the answer, in my opinion, is no. It's not a textbook island reversal. And that is because the gap filled. Now, is it a strong signal that the gap filled and then continued higher? Yes, because you have very strong volume here. So that was exhaustion volume on Apple. Huge gap down. Immediately the gap pretty much fills. And then we gap higher and continue higher. So this is a obviously a gap and go. Right? Gap and go. We got a gap and go. So that's why I've been bullish, very bullish on Apple since that time. I mean, you... You had an exhaustion volume, it gapped down, it filled the gap, and then it had a bullish gap and go. Even though it's not an island reversal, some of the sentiment is kind of the same. Now, I'll give you a hint. 
on this chart that we can see in front of us, there is a potential bearish island reversal. Does anyone see it? On the chart that we're looking at right now, there is a pretty decent bearish island reversal. All right, here it is. Bow, bow, bow. So there's the island reversal. And you can hover your crosshairs over and you'll see that there was a gap in price. The low of this candle was 174.93. And the high of this candle was 174.78. So there was a 20 cent double gap action right there on, 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 on that trade. And that's also when I got really bearish on Apple is once this candle came in and once this candle came in, I was just protecting myself at that point. Long term, I'm very bullish, but short term, I'm buying puts you know, left and right and protecting my positions on the downside. Let's go look at another island reversal. Um, it's not on Dropbox. Yep, it is on Dropbox. Okay, so DBX. This is a good example. Not a perfect one, but again, same instance, same type of information. So you get a bullish trade, and then the trend starts going down. You get a gap down with really big volume. Okay, so that's key. So this actually hasn't happened yet. And I'm not saying that it will. I'm just saying that it could. That's what we do in trading is we plan for the future. So this would be a uncleared, unfilled gap if Dropbox gaps up above here and doesn't fill for five days, that would be a bullish island reversal on Dropbox. Because you have a double gap action around 2480. So you still have a few days until earnings. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could. The one that I made the most money on in my career was this island reversal on GoPro. And GoPro, so this is GPRO. When GoPro was having its little move, this one was, uh, again, something that's really interesting to consider. But this was a gap up right here and we did at one point on GoPro gap down. Now what's interesting on this trade is even though it's not a very crystal clear on reversal, what was very interesting is you had to extrapolate some of the data to use the information on the gaps to understand how this was gonna play out. So you had a gap up, okay, cool, no big deal and it didn't fill for five days. Then a few days later, it had a gap down. This candle was a shaved bottom candle. So based on my video with shaved bottom candles, that particular gap, everyone was already in bearish on that candle. So when it gaps down, it retests and it fills the gap. So the cool part about island reversals is the gaps can fill but until they get above the candle that creates the gap down, I will still look for a bearish move. So right here, when this candle comes in, that's when I was like, all right, folks, GoPro is gonna have a massive pullback. This is all the way back in 2014. So on this candle right here, 14th of December, or 1st of December, 2014, after that gap down happened, retest. So it wasn't quite an island reversal, but you got the same relative sentiment. You got the fact that it was likely going to happen just simply based on that overall move. Um, let's go look at, see if I can find any of those. These are, these are just regular gaps at this point. Just a regular gap, regular gap. Let's go look at Twitter, and I think Acacia also had one. So this one was unique on Twitter. Big gap up, huge volume. It ran, it ran, it ran. And then notice how it gaps down and traps people. Do you see how there's an unfilled gap, double gap action right in here? You guys see that? 
So it's small, but it is there. There is a unfilled double gap where it gapped up here and it gapped down and did not fill. And you can see how many people were trapped on that trade, right? Huge gap down on Twitter back in October, 2016. Now the cool part is when a gap like that fills, so when you actually do get a filling of that gap, that's a really strong level. Now here's another good example that's not crystal clear of a bullish Allen reversal, but it's still the same concept. Right now on Twitter, you have the gap that is unfilled, is that, that's the unfilled portion of this gap. So the unfilled portion of this gap is that red box. So initially, when it initially gapped down, it was this entire blue box. Do you guys see that? So you had the blue box, but that was initially the entire unfilled gap, but now it's just the red box. So when Twitter gapped up the next uh, day or two, so right there, when Twitter gapped up, was there still an unfilled gap at that price? Yes or no? And the answer is yes. It's very small, but it's there. And again, that's a very big insight. So if I was to draw that unfilled gap, it would be like this. It'd be like a 20 cent unfilled double gap where right here, the low of this candle is 1890. The high of this candle is 1879. So you have about an 11 cent unfilled gap all right so you have a bullish gap and go you do have an island reversal it's barely but it's there and what type of gap was this this is a bullish gap and go absolutely right so we have a bullish gap and go on twitter so a bullish gap and go on twitter you have an island reversal because this is an unfilled gap so unless this gap fills in five days you have a high degree certainty that's going to continue higher so there, there's the pullback, and then it never fills. Beautiful pullback. Look where it pulls back to also. How strange. Pulls back into a moving average and bounces? What a concept. So that was another island reversal that was a bullish island reversal on Twitter. And again, it's not going to look as crystal clean as it's going to look in the textbooks, but that's okay. So going back to ANET, if we're down to look at ANET and we're going to ask ourselves, is this an island reversal? Well, we have a few things to contend with. We have a trend down and we gapped down on volume. So if we gapped down on volume and let's say ANET trades up and then gaps up later, in the near future, what type of what type of island reversal would that be? And the argument, what well, you could make that say, okay, well, I think that'll be a bullish island reversal because you had a trade down, you had a gap down, and you have a gap up, you have a double gap action. So if that gap doesn't fill for five days, you're looking for that bounce to continue higher. The answer is a net is not a gap, um, an island reversal yet, but it could be. Um, this particular gap right here was not an island reversal. Let me just turn off all the moving averages, but so you can kind of see that a little more clearly. But this was not an island reversal on a net because back over here had a, a filled gap, still a strong gap. I'm not denying that. It just wasn't specifically an island reversal. Um, here's one. Oh man, look how beautiful this is. You guys see it? The island reversal right here. That's it. Gap up, gap down, same gap price. You can draw a line right in here, an unfilled gap. Now, I'm not saying that you would have just gone bearish out the gate, but what I am saying is when you get a gap down like that, you can go and you can recognize, oh man, this, this could be an island reversal. Look at this super small indecision bullish candle. So based on the gap down, based on the fact that you know some bulls are trapped, Okay, so we're looking at this bullish candle and people are certainly trapped, right? 
People are trapped. The same people who bought there are the same people who bought there. You have two nice bullish candles that are trapped. People are losing money. You have a double gap action in this space. So when this bullish high wave candle comes in, you don't know that it's gonna break lower, but what you could definitely do is have an entry here and a stop loss there in the gap and play that breakdown. And that would have been a beautiful bearish trade on ANET to play that bearish island reversal. You guys follow me so far? Any questions? I'll go back and see if I can find some other ones on ANET. Um, that gap filled. Actually, this is an island reversal down here. Is it? Uh, no, it's not. That gap right there filled. So on this one on ANET, so this is a really strong bearish gap down. Look, looks like this was Brexit. Uh, really strong bearish gap down on ANET. Right here, if this gap would not have filled, if that would have been a bigger gap intraday, and you could have drawn a double gap, that would have been an island reversal. It had similar characteristics, right? But it wasn't quite, it wasn't, it wasn't quite one. Now, if I go look at, uh, let's go look at a stock on a 15 minute chart, since I talked about 15 minute charts, and kind of look at island reversals, and you'll get the 15 minute charts pretty frequently. Um, you'll get some good island reversals. See if I can find one. This is Herbal Life. I'm scrolling back. I don't see any yet. And that's okay. I mean, like I said, they don't happen massively often. When they do, they're pretty fun. Um, nope. Don't see any right now in Herbal Life. Okay. Let's go to Google because Google's going to have one potentially soon. All right, so let's look at Google. This is the 15 minute chart. So we can see that you have a gap down right here on Google, right? Big gap down. So we trade sideways, trade sideways. We've already got one gap right here, so that's a, that's a good start. So what if Google gaps up to here, trades higher, trades down, and bounces, and never fills that gap? Would that be an island reversal, ladies and gentlemen? Yes or no? And the answer is yes, that would be an island reversal on the 15 minute chart. Which means you could play that for day trades, you could play that for short term swing trades, you could play that on the 15 minute time frame, right? In and out, maybe a few days. Doesn't mean that it is forever and ever gonna go higher, although it certainly could. Let's go look at one on Tesla on a 15 minute chart. And Top over here. So this is one that occurred on Tesla not too long ago, and it's a little hard to see, but there it's there. So you get a gap up here, and you get a gap up there. Two gap ups, all right? Stock gaps down really strongly. Stock fades, and then rolls over. Coincidence? Well, what's interesting, is at that particular price, it did not actually fill the gap. This gap up, the low of this gap was 281.28. The high of this candle pattern, 281.16. So are you telling me, Newsom, that you can have an island reversal by 10 pennies? Yeah. If that gap doesn't fill, then you have a very strong level of which to act as a resistance. You have a very strong level that you can act as a stop location. You can have a strong level where you do bear call spreads, where you do call sales, covered calls, where you do all kinds of number of things. And since then, Tesla did absolutely just crush lower. So if we had to guess, where is Tesla likely going to go in the next few weeks to months? And the answer is to fill this gap over here. So it's gonna to have to fill this gap first, but it's coming for that gap fill, just letting you all know. And this was a very nice gap right here on Tesla, beautiful bullish gap and go, nice little double bottom. So we played that for a day trade, we played the one today for a day trade. 
so if, if Tesla gaps up again tomorrow, the next day, I mean, you know, you have this consolidation right here, really good consolidation. She could easily continue higher. Does anybody have a stock that you want me to look at to see any kind of island reversals or look at any patterns really quick? But that really is it. I mean, as far as the actual pattern itself, that's the shape of it. And you can find some good examples on all kinds of time frames on numerous stocks. And if you find those patterns, they really do just simply help you identify really strong, very, very strong support and resistance locations. If those or when those gaps do not fill in that certain time frame, you have a great location to know, all right, this is gonna be a good pivot, this is gonna be good resistance, this is gonna be good support, whatever it is that you're looking at. Clive says, the size, does the size of the gap matter? It's a very good question. I can't answer that specifically, Clive, because I do not have any statistics on the gap size as it relates to how powerful the island reversal is. Bottom line, the more people trapped on the gap, the better it will work. So if you have a lot of bulls trapped and it gaps down, so for example, here on Tesla, even though this is not an island reversal, you can see that you had a lot of bullish traders trapped on this gap down. So a three to 5% gap is always a good size gap. I like those gap sizes and you know, those are kind of my preference. So if I'm day trading, I love to find a gap in that range, but it's a great question. I think carbon black, uh, does this have an island reversal? Um, no, it actually does not. Doesn't have an island reversal because it's already filled the gap. So here's the previous high, right? Previous high. So there's you can't really draw a straight line from the gap of this gap down to this gap up. They don't really intersect. However, even though that's the case, can we still kind of extrapolate the data to, and say to ourselves, yeah, this is a pretty strong gap on carbon black. We can. So even though it's not an exact bearish, or sorry, a, a bullish island reversal, right? It's not textbook. The lines and the prices aren't exactly adequate. We can still kind of extrapolate the data and go, yeah, it's still a pretty strong gap though. Because it did gap up right here not too long ago, and then it gapped down. What I can say, Clive, is just like normal, the bigger the gap down, the more likely that gap is to fade. So Acacia Technologies is a really good example of that. Um, this was a massive, massive bearish gap and go. Huge, huge gap, massive volume and just trades into a support and then bounces. Started filling the gap and believe it or not, um, this was almost an island reversal on Acacia. So if I draw a line right here, you can see that it did fill pretty much five days after, white candle gapped up, retested the gap, bounced, and then this is when it fully filled the gap right there. So it fully filled the gap, but it's still, you can see the sentiment. That gap acted as a very strong support because it was at one point a double gap action. It was the beginning of an island reversal pattern. So they're still very useful, even if you can find them wherever you can find them, they're very useful. Here's Planet Fitness. So Planet Fitness had a gap down today. What do you guys think? Is this an island reversal, yes or no? For those who are here and if you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else that you might be watching this video welcome to put your answer in the comment section below what do you think is this an island reversal on planet fitness and I'm going to say nope no it is not so you have a gap down right the gap down it's already filled the gap down and there's no gap over here so this is not an island reversal Let's go look at one or two more. GoDaddy. So GoDaddy. Just trying to look and see if I can find an island reversal. So is this an island reversal right here? The answer is nope. 
also not an island reversal. Very strong bullish gap and go. We're not arguing that at all. Incredible bullish gap, phenomenal location, perfect in every way. It's just not an island reversal. So the cool news is they don't really happen all that often. And I'm pretty good at catching them or showing you all if they do occur. This is the most recent one I can remember as well on Acacia Communications. Type in a seven if you can see that bearish island reversal. Yep, so again, you get the gap up right here. Very pretty gap, nice little candle, and then you get the gap down. This is textbook. So when I see a textbook gap and uh, island reversal, sure, very fun to play. And that doesn't mean that you had to buy every single dollar that you own worth of puts on Acacia, but it could have meant to not go bullish. Or if you were gonna go bullish, at least wait. And taking that island reversal and mixing it with a head and shoulders pattern, or a quadruple top or whatever you want to call it. You know, once this candle came in, that was done city. Put a fork in her, Sonny. She's done. So again, you knew at least at that specific location not to be bullish. Um, and then, you know, okay, sure, we've already looked at it, but it came all the way down to the pre-market, you know, to the IPO lows, trapped everybody right there with exhaustion volume, perfect exhaustion volume, by the way, on the 16th of April, 2018 and hasn't looked back since. Do one more, see if there's an, any, any uh, island reversal on Shake Shack. Shake Shack, nope, I don't see one bullishly. Let's see if there's a bearish one up here. What do you guys think? Is this an island reversal? The answer is technically no. However, is it a strong pattern? <laughs> so yes, it's not technically an island reversal. It's about as close as you can get. But again, you got that evening star pattern. And that's why I mentioned earlier, island reversals have the similar etiquette, a similar sentiment as evening star reversal patterns. If you're playing a bearish island reversal, if you're playing a bullish island reversal, they can have similar sentiment perspectives as a morning star reversal. So that was the all time high on Shake Shack. We've never been higher yet, but that is a wonderful example of almost an island reversal, but one that you can know at that point in time, yeah, I'm not specifically bullish anymore. And obviously again, Shake Shack trade down, accumulated for a long time. Had a good gap right here and gapped up today. Beautiful, beautiful fade. And that's pretty much what we got on Shake Shack. Anyway, I hope this quick video was helpful, enlightening, or at least you thought some parts of it were cool. Like everything else, folks, in the market, it's just patterns. Some of them work, some of them don't. But you have to extrapolate the sentiment. That's your data. Learn to read these patterns and just understand who's buying who's making money, who's losing, who's excited, who's not excited, and then play the odds. So enjoy this recording. Feel free to watch it as many times as you want. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. You all rock. Bye. Cool. Hope you liked it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to click that subscribe button. I send out videos like this all the time. My mission at Real Life Trading is to enrich lives. Thank you for being a part of that mission, and you absolutely rock. I'll see you. Bye.